That isn't the true Independence Day at all. What? Is that oh, we're just like going to have a big fight now after this, aren't we? But ironically, the Star Spangled Banner isn't actually American at all. So today we're going to check out a video I've had on my to watch list forever. I can't actually remember the source of it, but I'm going to say somebody suggested it in comments. It's from a channel I don't believe I've reacted to before called All Time Tens, and the video is called 10 Things Americans Get Wrong About America. I'm really curious to see if I, as a foreign person from Europe, also get these things wrong about America. Also, you can let me know below in comments if you think that these things are accurate or not. It's a good place to talk to each other. As usual, I'll be around in the first hour club to chat you. That's the first hour after I upload. Before I get into today's video, do be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, you're gonna bang your elbow. And that hurts. I don't know why they call it a funny bone. There's nothing funny about banging. So like, share, comment, subscribe. 10 things that Americans get wrong about America from all time tense. 10 things that Americans get wrong about America. Oh, we've seen Number 10. Independence Day. Independence Day, the anniversary of the publication of the Declaration of Independence of the United States. It's a big deal to the US, but which date is it? A lot of you would say the 4th of July, but guess what? That isn't the true Independence Day at all. What? It's actually. Also, loving the style choices on this channel, and I like this guy's energy. He seems good the 2nd of July upon which Continental Congress liberated the heck out of America. That's because it was on this day that Continental Congress voted for independence. It's believed that the occasion is celebrated on the 4th because that's the day when the revised version of the Declaration of Independence was adopted. It's all because of boring bureaucratic reasons. The fact that Americans celebrated this on the 4th would certainly come as a surprise to the Founding Fathers, especially John Adams, who wrote that the 2nd of July 1776 will be the most memorable a poker in the history of America. Well, Oops. turns out maybe not as memorable as you would have liked, sir. But what may be even more surprising is that, according to a Marist poll measuring public opinion and knowledge, one in four Americans don't know which country their forefathers actually declared independence from. Spoiler alert, by the way, it was us, Great Britain. Uh, do they really not know that? Is that true? I thought. Is that just a silly statistic? I feel like most people would know that, no? One in four, really? That seems too high. I don't think that's accurate. Sorry about all that. 77% correctly identified Great Britain, but France, Mexico, and Germany were frequently given as answers in the poll, oh, with some even suggesting Afghanistan, China, and Russia. Number nine, the best country in the world. According to the Pew Research Center, almost a third of Americans say that the US stands above all other countries in the world. Oh, we're just like going to have a big fight now after this, aren't we? Not with me. Don't fight with me. I'm just watching this. I am an unbiased... Well, everybody's biased. I'm just, I, you talk among yourselves. Hmm, sorry guys, but this isn't necessarily true. The United States now ranks 27th in the world for healthcare and education, according to Business Insider. These have both significantly declined from 1990 when the nation ranked 6th. According to Big Think, this is because America's scores declined in educational attainment. Because America's scores declined in educational attainment. Amga. Conspiracy theory. Who was she looking at there? potentially as a result of a decrease in spending. The top spots for these categories were both occupied by Finland in 1990 and 2016. To add insult to injury in the most recent United Nations World Happiness Report, the United States only just scraped into the top 20 happiest countries in the world, coming in 18th place. By the way, Finland yet again topped the leaderboard for that one, being the happiest country in the world to live in. Oh, no way! I have a friend from Finland. Also, I would have thought you would rank higher as a happy country because of prescriptions to antidepressants, ergo, like, people should be happier from all the antidepressants, right? No? I guess not. And not even the famous US economy can make up for those downfalls anymore. According to Huffington Post, the world's best economy now belongs to Switzerland. Not Finland this time. With the states coming in third place. Well, the states is the best country being American, though, so I guess you have that at least. I think they use the same uh, stock video file thing as me, because I've used that one before. Number eight. Oh, say can you hear. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem. 
You're probably very used to hearing that announcement at the start of most sporting or civic events in the States. The performance of the national anthem is an integral part of American culture and pretty much the epitome of Americanness. But ironically, the Star Spangled Banner isn't actually American at all. At least, the melody isn't anyway. Now, to its credit, the words of the anthem were written by American poet Francis Scott Key. They were originally about Fort McHenry and Baltimore, which successfully fought off the British Navy in 1814. But the tune of the song, which has been used for other American songs as well, such as the Boston Patriotic Song and Adams and Liberty, was in fact taken from an old 18th century British drinking song. Yep, Ooh. British. That song was to Anna Crayon in Heaven. Its composer was John Stafford Smith, and the lyrics were written by fellow Brit Ralph Tomlinson, president of the Anna Crayon Society. In case you're wondering, the Society was a popular gentleman's club in London whose members were dedicated to wit, harmony, and the god of wine. Not a bad place to rip off your national anthem, I suppose. Number seven, Torch for Liberty. At the end of the 19th century, 48 American states passed laws banning flag desecration. Most of these early statutes prohibited showing contempt for the flag in any way, such as publicly burning it, trampling on it, spitting on it, or showing a lack of respect for it in general. So, most Americans therefore think it's a crime to disrespect the American flag in any way. Hmm. But in 1989, that all changed, following the case Texas vs. Johnson. Johnson had been convicted by a Texas court for violating a state law that prohibited the desecration of a venerated object, such as as the US flag. The US Supreme Court eventually ruled that preventing someone from burning the flag is in fact a violation of the First Amendment. As a result, ah. it affirmed the right to desecrate the flag as a form of free speech. Before yeah. you just start talking it willy-nilly though, the practice is still illegal in some special circumstances, such as at military funerals. Number six, misquoting history. American well, history is full of that. iconic quotes that practically everyone knows, or at least think they do. But did you know you've probably got some of the most famous ones wrong? Let's exemplify the Apollo 13 mission in 1970, in which astronaut Jack Swigert delivered the iconic line, Houston, we have a problem. Except... Was it Houston, we have a problem? Was it not Houston, I think we have a problem, maybe? He didn't say that. What he actually said was, Houston, we've had a problem. Not oh, a grave okay. error, granted, but an interesting case of the Mandela effect nonetheless. Just in the same way, Paul Revere never famously exclaimed the British are coming either, and nor did George Washington claim that he cannot tell a lie. This anecdote was concocted by biographer Parson Weems, who frequently made up anecdotes for his biographies, and this was likely one of them. Finally, in the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, when Armstrong famously landed on the moon, listeners back on Earth heard, that's one small step for man, one oh, giant leap for mankind. But Armstrong maintained afterwards that he actually said that's one small step for a man and that the A had been lost in transmission. So it turns out many American catchphrases are just downright wrong. Number five, not so wall to wall. On the 24th of October 1929, the United States stock market notoriously crashed, a date now known as Black Thursday. Oh, One of the biggest that. myths surrounding the crash was that investors jumped out of the windows of their high-rise office buildings oh after realizing that they were financially ruined. Oh it is true that the rate of self-inflicted death increased in the United States during the Great Depression, but that's across the entire nation, so not as a result of the stock investors on Black Thursday. Oh, so where did this awful rumor originate from? Well, on the day after Black Thursday, one man jumped out of a window of a high-rise building. Just one. Of course, such a tragedy made the news, but it was because of newspaper columnist Will Rogers that people believed this type of activity was much more widespread than it actually was. He wrote, when Wall Street took that tailspin, you had to stand in line to get a window to jump out of, and spectators were selling space for bodies in the East River, which, yeah, wasn't true. This sensational myth is in circulation to this very day because of this one false report. Number four, pseudo-inventors. America has been home to some of history's most famous inventors, the Wright brothers and the aeroplane, Samuel Colt and the revolver. How about Thomas Edison and the electric light bulb? Well, actually, that one's not true. While Edison got the patent for the light bulb in 1880, leading us to assume the invention was his, its true creator was Warren Delarue. Delarue was a British scientist who created the device 40 years earlier. Although his name is probably one of the biggest in the automobile world, Henry Ford did not create the first gas-guzzling freeway-speeding icon of America that is the car. That achievement was the work of European engineers like Carl Benz and oh. Gottlieb Daimler. Benz okay. created his three-wheeled vehicle with an internal combustion engine, and Daimler created his motorized wow. four-wheeled automobile with a gasoline engine. Both submitted their patents on the same day in 1886, a <gasps> decade before Ford released his first car in 1890. And Benjamin Franklin definitely did not discover electricity by flying a kite in a thunderstorm. 
Electricity was already a known phenomenon in Franklin's time, since static electricity was discovered by the ancient Greeks. So, sorry America. Number 3. The Old Ball Game as any devout fan will tell you, Cooperstown is synonymous with America's favourite pastime, baseball. That's because it was where the national sport was born when it was created by Abner Doubleday in 1839. But, yeah, guess what? This history is in fact a fabrication, conjured up in 1907 by the Mills Commission, who issued a report asserting that baseball was invented in this New York village. Their conclusion was based on nothing more than a testimony from mining engineer Abner Graves, but it's been discounted by historians. Of course, baseball was based, no pun intended, on the English game of rounders, but the game as we know oh. it today was in fact the brainchild of New Yorker Alexander Cartwright. I totally thought that rounders was based on baseball. That's interesting. Cartwright invented the modern baseball field in 1845 after playing a similar game on a plot in Manhattan. He then created the New York Knickerbocker Baseball Club and he and his fellow players created the first rules for the modern game. The first recorded baseball game was in 1846 when Cartwright's Knickerbockers lost against New York Baseball Club. And then in 1858 the first organised baseball league was formed. Number 2. Hard Cheese while the bald eagle and American bison are officially recognised as the national animals of the United States, unofficially we'd say that Mickey Mouse is definitely up there too. And really? don't say that Mickey was based on a mouse that Disney had trained to do tricks himself, while others say he first came about when Disney drew his pet mice when writing to his niece. According to Walt Disney himself, the idea of Mickey came to him while on a train in 1928. But the truth of the matter is, that's all poppycock and that Disney did not create the iconic mouse. In fact, Disney as we know him today was actually created by Disney animator Ub Iwerks. Iwerks has been dubbed the Forgotten Man of Disney, and with good reason. After losing the rights to Disney's first creation, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, Walt asked Iwerks to come up with a new character, and Mickey was born in 1928. Wow. But over the years, Iwerks felt he wasn't getting enough credit for his creation and left the company. He did eventually come back, but he refused to work in animation again. Number one. What did he do? In the beginning. Let's end where it all began, with the first president, George Washington. Or the sort of first president. According to Time magazine, 94% of those asked in a study remember George Washington as America's first president. But they were all technically wrong. He wasn't the first. In fact, no? he wasn't even one of the first. During the American Revolution, several presidents were elected by the Continental Congress. The oh. first was Peyton Randolph, whose most notable achievement was the creation of the Continental Army. Then there was Thomas Mifflin, who was president between 1783 and 84. Among his achievements was that he oversaw the ramification of the Treaty of Paris. Then came John Hancock, who became mm, famous for signing him. the Declaration of Independence during his time as president between 1785 and 1786. We won't go through all of them, but the difference here is that George Washington was America's first president to be elected by the people. This was in 1789, when the US Constitution Thanks. gave the rights for citizens to vote for the electors, who in turn vote for the president. But technically speaking, George Washington was not the first president of the United States. He was the 15th. So that was 10 things Americans get wrong about America. Which one shocked you the most? Wow, that was super interesting. Let me know below in the comments what you make of all those, if you are an actual factual American and what you think of everything that he said in that video. That's it for today, see you on the other side, bye. For getting to be It's gonna be pretty hard to get through this video because now we have screaming children. They're screaming, actually, Screaming. And later. Pretty sure they're all elephants because they stomp, stomp, stomp the whole time. More moments later. I do apologize. I live next door to actual elephants this week. Hopefully, they're going to pop off home very soon.